What is up guys and welcome to the first episode of Driving Force on the Rad Potential YouTube channel. This is where we're going to talk about the story behind the car. So why the owner of the car owns that particular car and what like brought him to that point or why, why they have it basically. And then kind of the story of the car and not really too much like what you've done with it but more so like the cool experiences you've had with the car, people you've met, stuff like that. So I got Calvin here, just like assistant conversation. Normally, moving forward, it'll be me interviewing somebody else, but we figured we'd do the first one on my car, see how the audio works, see how everything works, and then we can improve from there. So, let's kind of start out. I got the car six years ago now, I think. Right about five. six years ago. We went to high school. Yeah, it was right after high school. Um, when I went to college, just kind of just like my my commuter car that I wanted that was fun right you know a good way to talk the parents into letting you get a fun car um, I had had a Toyota Supra before this a Mark III Supra but I had always wanted one of these I actually went to buy an RX-7 the motor blew up in the RX-7 when I test drove it and then I found another Supra found a Supra and brought that home with me so Calvin and I have had some pretty good fun driving this thing around college I let him drive it a few times and have it for a whole summer which was cool uh, when I had my FC looking back at the older generations and these first gen RX-7s are just sick so that's kind of what led me to, to own this car and I would say 100% I wouldn't be in Nashville playing with cars as much as I do had I not ever bought this I mean I bought this car for 1500 bucks yeah. um, it ran and drove a little street port 12A and until we started working on it yeah when we took it apart to make it better it, it broke all the time. <laughs> if I'd have just left it alone, it'd be fine. Yeah. But it wouldn't sound this epic. It wouldn't sound cool. I wouldn't have almost put it in a guardrail. No. So one of the cool Calvin stories, which I'll tell you, is like, when we took it to Deals Gap, the, the first year, we went yeah, to Deals Gap for the Rotary Rally. He drove this, and I drove the turbo car. But he was 
driving it and had a wheel bearing malfunction. Got a little hot. I about put it straight in a guardrail when it locked up. So. Yeah. So needless to say, we were only 40 minutes from my newfound Tennessee friends. So we called up Charles, who we were meeting at Deals Gap, and was like, Charles, we need a GSLSE front, what was it, left side, driver's uh, side, right passenger side. side, right side, spindle, and wheel bearing, because we just smoked ours, and it successfully welded the spindle to, to the hub. Like, it, they, they wasn't coming off, no chance. We were stuck on the side of the road, we went to this little shop, the guy heated it up, the impact, couldn't get it off, nothing. We limped it to this like church parking lot. We made three trips back and forth to Charles' house before we ended up just limping it to Nashville, leaving it, and then driving the white um, turbo first gen all the way to that also the dragon. And we also broke that one. We broke the axle mount off the, off the, the disc. It just like ripped the housing off. Doing a pull on the interstate and it started like walking sideways and stuff. So in the midst of trying to fix brake issues, we had to weld an axle back together. Yeah, we did. It was good. Good fun trip. That took us what? What did we leave? Like 8 in the morning? It was supposed to take us 7 hours and it took us 21 hours. Yeah. 21 hours. 3 times seven as long hours as it was supposed to. Yeah. yeah. And it was hot. Didn't have AC. And we drove the Dragon, Calvin did, at night, in, in the, the rain, rain, in an RX-7 that was turbo and had very horrible tires on it. It was the worst. And the steering wheel moves forward and backward. And it's, yeah. That's another video about that car. Well, I'll Hope, borrow it one weekend. Hopefully, <laughs> video on it. hopefully rotary trucks do better than I do with RX-7s. Yeah. I break yeah. them all the time. CRB in front of us right now that is going slow. Very slow. And if you haven't noticed, and if I didn't clip it out, I'll put it in right now. This thing's got some gnarly shake, the bridge port, if you're trying to drive slow. You just can't drive slow. It'll start bucking and kicking and trying to put your face in the steering wheel. But we're headed to ride mountain bikes this morning. You can film this video. I needed a place to live in Nashville while I was down here doing a civil engineering internship and I hit up Johnny to like find a good apartment and he just offered to let me live with him so um, I lived with Johnny for three summers I think two and a half until I bought my house here's a little ball Alright guys, so I want to apologize for interrupting the driving time of this video for some weird wacky reason, I don't know, it's because my camera's old or whatever, but it only recorded so much and then it quit and I didn't see it because, you know, we're driving and whatever and it turned off. So, the things that we didn't get to cover in the video are coming next. The reason it's called the mouse. So, I had Calvin tell the story and basically... Calvin was borrowing the car for the summer, right? So he had the RX-7, I was driving my FC, and um, I was at school, he was at school, I mean, he's doing auto body tech and stuff like close to town, and I was off at college. Anyways, he's driving the car. One day, he texts me and said, hey, I think there's a mouse in your car. And I was like, well, okay, well, what are you gonna, like, can you get it out? Like, what are you gonna do about it? Because, you know, the car had sat for a month or so while I was at school and whatever. Anyways, he's like, 
I'll handle this. So he's driving the car one day, sees the mouse run across the back dash, right, or whatever, here, up there, under the thing, whatever, and he was like, you know, freaking out and stuff. Holy cow, there's a mouse in here. I'm driving, don't want to crash. Anyways, next picture he sends me is a bunch of mouse traps all through the car with peanut butter. Needless to say, he got the mouse, and then since then, the car has always been called the mouse. It is silver, it is gray, whatever. Um, and we've just always called it that, you know, the slow one, the one that's always been around. So that's really the big end of the story, the last bit. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of, of Driving Force and like don't let the lack of crazy cinematography scare you away. Um, I have ordered external mics, a couple new cameras are coming, and I'm pretty excited to, to go film the next one. And, and it's hard um, just to, to like get the conversation going when it's not, you know, like me, it's hard for me to have a conversation with myself, if that makes sense, um, and trying to get Calvin to, to um, facilitate that, you know, it can, it can be tough at times to have your, have your buddies come and help you, but anyways, the next one, I'm super stoked, um, we're either going to do one of my rotary buddies here or something like that, we'll coordinate it up once I get my cameras in, and I'm really excited to continue this on, basically take the, the storyline, the things we talked about, the cool stuff like that, disregard the fact that my silver rx7 is literally the loudest car ever um it has one muffler and it is just it's super loud it sounds epic in person though don't don't let that discourage you from making your car loud it just makes it as a content creator um i wouldn't even call myself a content creator just like mr rad doing stuff in the woods guy trying to make videos for you guys um it just makes it tough for me to edit that when i don't have external mics and i can't turn all the ambient noise sound off and i'm not a keyboard wizard to be able to figure it out yet so um i just wanted to add all that in there um i hope you enjoyed the video the pictures and stuff like that that's the kind of the goal to tell the story of the car with the owner um and and kind of how they've grown together i mean that car is literally responsible for everything you see here pretty much i mean i wouldn't have bought other rx7s had i not bought the first one um it is a disease by the way once you get one you just have to have five Anyways, I wouldn't have bought those cars. I wouldn't have met Charles. You know, I wouldn't have had a rotary truck. I probably would be living in southern Indiana instead of Tennessee, and I probably wouldn't be doing YouTube. So, you know, that's the that's the car for me. That's the one I'll always have. Um, and, you know, plans down the road, maybe get a new shell. That one's rusty, whatever, whatever. But, it's you know, it's the car. That's, like, that's my car. So I'm excited. If you watch this far in the video, here's the, the, the hint on what I'm doing this weekend. I am taking the mouse to a drift event, and it is going to be epic. Um, it's got an LSD, no angle, stock, it's just Racing Beat Springs. And we're going to see how it, how it shreds. Um, I had some comments on the Instagram to... Uh, to like go drive them more and, and go tear it up and my buddy nick um with the white fc was going taking his old beater 240 to events i took him for a ride in that and he was like man this thing makes some power you could have a good time and you know um no filter no whatever i don't do like 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 pavement stuff that much anymore i've been really just like a dirt guy racing rally um you know you get stick me in a miata on autocross course we're gonna be pretty competitive but um, it's just a little different. So we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see how quickly it transitions over We'll see how well we can go from Shredding my driveway like a pro which when I get my cameras and I'm gonna do more driving on this to show you how epically fun it is but um, Yeah, I am excited so get pumped for that next week. We're going drifting in the mouse It's gonna be epic and if you're up at Clarksville drift watching this whatever that's where I'll be so thanks for watching this episode of driving force slash the kickoff episode and i'm stoked for what's to come and hopefully you guys stick around so thanks for watching keep it rad